Hello Maths fans. Thank you everybody for tuning in. This is question number two with Tom Rocks Maths and I Love Mathematics. The winning question this week is how long would it take for an object to sink to the bottom of the ocean? Now this is a really great question. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with it as you'll see. And I really like it because my PhD was in fluid mechanics and this is a fluid mechanics problem. So I made up. So thank you for sending the question in and thank you for everybody that voted. So to kick off with, there are two things, two bits of information that we need. We need to decide what our object is that's sinking and also in which ocean is it sinking so we know how deep the ocean is. So here are the four deepest points in each of the four main oceans, the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian and Arctic. As you can see, the, the Marianas Trench is the deepest point of the ocean anywhere on Earth, over 11 kilometers deep, which is insane. So we have our four deepest points of four different oceans, and now we have our objects. So we're going to consider a sphere, a streamlined body, so almost like a raindrop shape designed to have very good aerodynamics and therefore would fall quite fast, a cube, Usain Bolt, and the Eiffel Tower. And we're going to work out how long it would take each of these five objects to sink to the bottom of the four different oceans. The key maths equation that we need to be able to solve this problem is called the drag equation. And this is a piece of maths by Lord Rayleigh. As well as coming up with the drag equation, he also um, was part of the discovery of the noble gas argon. And he actually won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1904 for this discovery. And his equation here, the drag equation. So this tells you the force that acts on an object when it is moving through a fluid. So your force is given by FD, D for drag. We have a factor of a half. We have rho, which is the density of the fluid. We have V squared, which is the speed at which the object is moving through the fluid squared. We have CP, which is called the drag coefficient, and this will vary depending on the object, and we're going to work it out or calculate it for our five objects in a moment. And finally, we have A, where A here is the projected two-dimensional area of our object. So for things like the sphere and the cube, we, we, can, we know this exactly, but for the other ones, we might have to estimate a bit but basically A represents the size of your object. We now need a second piece of physics, a second mathematical equation, which comes from another British mathematician and physicist, Sir Isaac Newton. And it's his most famous law, his second law, force equals mass times acceleration. For an object falling to the bottom of the ocean, so just being dropped at the surface and just left to fall, it's falling under gravity, and gravity is basically an acceleration that's pulling things towards the centre of the Earth. And we know what gravitational acceleration is. It's equal to g, which is 9.81 metres per second squared. So force, accelerated force, is equal mass times gravity. And when the object is falling, these two forces will be in balance because we're going to ignore other things like buoyancy effects and turbulence. We're going to keep the problem nice and simple. And so equating the drag force and the acceleration force from gravity and rearranging and solving, you get your terminal velocity given by this equation. And the terminal velocity is the maximum speed that a falling object can reach as it falls through a fluid. So initially, of course, the object has no speed as you drop it, and then it accelerates under gravity and it will eventually reach a terminal sort of maximum peak velocity and it will then fall at that speed. And what we're going to do is assume that the object will fall from the surface to the bottom of the ocean at one of these depths, constantly at the terminal velocity speed. And this will give us an approximation of how fast the object falls and therefore because we know how deep the ocean is, how long it will take for the object to reach the bottom of the ocean. So I filled in some of the data in the table for the drag coefficient, the area and the mass for some of these objects. 
But for some of them, it's really quite tricky. And again, we've got to make a few more decisions or a few more assumptions before we can get the correct numbers. So for example, for a sphere, we, we know the drag coefficient from experiments. We know what the area of the sphere will be. It's pi times the radius squared. But the mass of the sphere will depend on what it's made from. So if it's a, a sphere of sort of crumpled up paper, for example, it won't weigh very much. But if it's a sphere made of lead, it's going to be really heavy. So we're going to have to decide what our sphere is made out of to know the mass. The same for the streamlined body and the cube. We need to know what they're made out of. So I made a few more assumptions, a few more decisions, and now filled in the whole table. So we have a sphere, which is going to be one meter in diameter, and it's going to be made out of lead. For our streamlined body and our cube, I'm actually going to use these two to demonstrate how important this drag coefficient is. Because this one is streamlined, it's very aerodynamic, so it's a very small drag coefficient compared to a cube, which is not very aerodynamic. So we're going to assume that they're both made of steel and that the cube is one meter cubed of steel, has, which is very heavy. And then we're going to also assume that the streamlined body is such that it has the same area and the same mass. So the only difference between these two is going to be the drag coefficient because of the shape. Having now crunched the numbers and worked out the terminal velocity of all our objects, we can see that Usain, for once, is actually the slowest of all of our objects. And we, the Eiffel Tower will actually fall at a reasonably similar speed to a one meter lead sphere and a one meter steel cube. They will fall at a roughly the same terminal velocity as something as big as the Eiffel Tower, which is just quite incredible to think about. And now, of course, that we have the terminal velocity, we simply do the depth divided by the velocity to get an estimate for the time. So rather than go through the time taken to sink to all of these various different depths, of course, the longest time will occur for the, the deepest point. So we're just going to concentrate on that one. You can, of course, use these numbers and work out the time for all the others or any other depth that you want now that we have all of the data. So first up, our one meter lead sphere. This would take around 10 minutes to sink to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. Our streamlined body, which as you've seen has the highest terminal velocity, so it's going to sink the fastest. And this will only take three minutes to sink to the bottom. Which is really quite incredible how fast that will be. Of course, in, in reality, it will be a little bit slower because of its initial acceleration. It doesn't instantly reach its speed of 62 meters per second, which is insanely quick, but it will eventually get there and then travel at that speed constantly down to the depths. Our cube, so this is the same mass and the same area as our streamlined body, but just has a, a worse shape, a less aerodynamic shape. And it would actually take five times longer for the cube to sink to the bottom of the Mariana stretch. So it shows the importance of the, this drag coefficient and how aerodynamic your object actually is. Usain Bolt, we've already spotted he's got the smallest terminal velocity of all of our objects. So we expect him to take the longest, and that of course is true. And it would actually take him around two and a half hours to sink to the bottom of the ocean. And finally, the Eiffel Tower. So despite being such a huge, massive object with a mass of 7.3 million kilograms, it actually doesn't have the highest terminal velocity. And it would actually take the Eiffel Tower around 12 minutes to sink to the bottom of the Marianas Trench. So our fastest object would be the streamlined body, despite being the, uh, one of the smaller objects we're considering. And our slowest object would be Usain Bolt. So sorry Usain, but you can't win them all. So thank you very much for everyone for watching. Thank you, as always, for sending in your questions and voting. And remember, get your questions in to Tom Rocks Maths and I Love Mathematics ready for the third question. And of course, get voting for your favourite. Share it with all your friends and make sure everyone else votes for the question that you want answered next time.